How's it going guys, it's Kyler the how to guy 123 here and today I'm going to be answering one of the most common questions I get asked on this channel and that's how I customize my desktop with the big clock and my system information. And to do this I use a free program called Raymeter and Raymeter is a free desktop customization tool that allows you to use user creator skins to personalize your desktop with various widgets like clocks, system monitors, audio players, etc. And in this tutorial I'll just go over the basics of how to install Raymeter and how to download and add skins. So let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial. So let's go ahead and take a look on how to install Rainmeter. So I'll provide a download link in the description below. You can just find uh, Rainmeter at Rainmeter.net. And you'll have two downloads here. You can download a beta release or a final release. Uh, in this case, I'll just download the final release. It's probably a little more stable. So just click on download. And that's going to start the download. It's a pretty small file, so it shouldn't take too long to download. So once it's done downloading, we can just click on it to open and, and uh, install the program. So click on run. Then we'll choose your language, then click on OK. Then we'll choose Standard Installation. Click on Next. Then Install. Make sure uh, to install the 64-bit version. And if you want to launch Rainmeter on startup, uh, make sure to check that. Then click on Install. Then click on Yes. And wait for it to install. Now uh, click on Run Rainmeter to run Rainmeter once we click on Finish. And you'll see a whole bunch of widgets have now appeared on our desktop. These are just the default widgets or skins that Rainmeter comes with. And if you want to manage and remove these skins, you can either do that by right clicking on a skin and then click on manage skin. Uh, you can also find this by coming down here to the system tray and then clicking on the brain drop. And that's going to open up the Rainmeter settings or the Rainmeter manager, or whatever you want to call it. And you'll see a folder here called Illustro. That's what this skin is called, the default skin. And if you want to remove one of these, you just need to uh, choose which one you want to uh, remove. So in this case, we'll remove this welcome screen here. So just open the folder here that says welcome. Then you'll see a .ini file, welcome.ini, click on it. Then click on unload and that's going to unload a skin. So we can do the same with the system here. Just open the system folder, click on system.ini and then unload it. This is totally optional. If you want to keep the skin, that's totally fine. But we'll actually uh, in a second take a look at installing and uh, or downloading and installing system or user created skins. Uh, if we want to remove the clock here, click on clock, clock.ini, unload that. And then if you want to remove the disks here, click on disk, the disk folder, and two disks.ini and unload that. So now we've unloaded all of these skins. So now let's actually go ahead and take a look at downloading and installing uh, other skins. So there are many places online where you can download skins. I'll provide three links in the description below to recommended sites where you can find some skins. Uh, one is deviantart.com, uh, rainmeterhub.com, and visualskins.com. These are some pretty good sites where you can find some skins. All right, so let's go ahead and install a few example skins. All the skins that I installed in this video, I'll also leave a link for in the description below. But anyways, the first skin we're gonna install is called Elegant Clock. It's just a simple uh, clock. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here on visualskins.com and then click on the download button here. And you're going to notice when you download a skin, it's in a .rm skin file. And the cool thing about the, these uh, rm skin files is you can simply just open them and check the skin you want to install and then click on install and it's just going to install the skin for you uh, automatically. It's as simple as that. Uh, so we can just minimize out of Chrome here. Sometimes right when you install skins, they will appear on your desktop, but in this case it didn't. So we're just going to open up the Rainmeter uh, manager here by just going down to either the tray and then opening up and clicking on the raindrop here like I showed before. And you'll see a new folder here is called Elegant Clock and we'll have two options here. Uh, a dark clock .ini and a light clock. So we have two options here. So, uh, so if you wanted to load a skin, just click on the load button here to load a skin. And you can see it loaded a dark clock. Uh, but I think the light clock is going to look a little bit better in this situation. Uh, you can see we have a light clock here. Uh, and in Rain Meter, we have a couple options here. Oh yeah, one thing. If you want to position the clock on your desktop, you can just simply click on the clock and drag it around on the desktop to wherever you want to position it. I think the top right hand corner is a good place for this. And then uh, down here in Brain Meter, we have a couple options. So first the coordinates is the position, the X and Y coordinates of your desktop where the skin is going to be positioned. Uh, the position, we're going to kind of ignore this for now. This is if you want to layer uh, skins on top of each other. Uh, but for now, we'll just leave that on normal. Transparency, if you want to add 
a little bit of transparency to your skin. So for example, I have it on 60% here. You can see the clock has become a little bit more transparent. So if you want to give your skin some transparency, you can do that. But we'll just set that back to zero. On hover, this will kind of give your skin some actions if you hover your, your mouse over the skin. So for example, I have if I set this to hide and I hover my mouse over the clock, it's going to hide. Let's set that back to do nothing. Draggable if you want to be able to drag your skin or not. So if I uncheck this, I won't be able to drag the clock around. So this is good if you don't want to accidentally uh, move your skin by accident. Uh, click through. Check this if you want to be able to click anything that's behind the skin. And I think we're going to just leave the rest default for now. And uh, let's go ahead and install another skin. So one more thing I actually want to mention is if we click the edit button here, it's going to open the INI file in Notepad, and this contains all of the settings uh, of our Rainmaker skin. Now this is a little bit more complex, and I won't really go over this too much, but you can see a whole bunch of values here that contain like the font size and the colors. Uh, if you want, you can actually go ahead and manually configure these. So if you want to change the color, you can do that, change the size. Like I mentioned, it's a lot more complex, and for beginners, I probably wouldn't recommend touching this, but uh, it's an option. If you would uh, like to change that, uh, it's up to you. So the next skin we're going to install is called Simplicity Circles, and the skin just shows your system information. For example, your CPU usage, RAM usage, uh, battery, download speeds, stuff like that. Uh, so once again, we'll just come down here to the download button, and it's going to download another ARM skin file. Once again, we'll just open it to install it, to make sure these are both checked, and then click on install. So there we go, this skin has successfully been installed and the skin has actually started up on install. And you can see uh, we have our system information here. Now it actually has a, a little GUI here and like I showed before uh, where we actually went into the notepad to change the settings of the skin, this just gives us kind of a graphical interface to change those values. Uh, I actually don't know what happened to our clock, I'm not sure why that uh, got uh, unloaded. Uh, but uh, anyways, we can actually edit these values here if we want to change the size uh, and color of our information. I'm actually going to, we'll look at this in a second, but uh, let's just uh, maybe go ahead and uh, edit these a little bit. So you can see that uh, this skin actually comes with a black bar that contains all of the uh, system information here. We're actually going to disable that. I don't really like that too much. Uh, so let's come down here to bars and it's this one here the bar horizontal we're gonna unload that and i don't think i want to show all this information so for the time here since we already have a clock here we'll just we don't want to show the date again so it is this one here time we'll just unload that and you can actually see all of your active skins here so you can go one by one and uh, edit these if you would like i don't think i want the the weather here so this one here is the weather you can actually move these around so we'll move them around in a second so this shows our weather and I couldn't actually get this to work earlier so we'll just uh, unload that and uh, so let's actually move these under the clock here uh, so I want our CPU usage our RAM uh, this here is the how much space is left on our C drive I think I'll keep that and uh, I think this shows uh, the items in our uh, recycling bin I don't think I want that so we'll just come here to recycle and unload that and this is I think our download speeds You can also right click on the skin and manage skin and that will bring you right to the skin Oh, this is for our music player. I don't want that either uh, So let's actually go ahead and edit these with the uh, graphical interface here So for the height, I think I want this is gonna make our skin a little bit bigger So I think I want these to look a little bit bigger. So let's make this maybe like 32 And you can see those got a little bit bigger Maybe we'll try 34. Uh, those are good. You can change the colors if you want. I think I'm going to leave them white. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave all the other stuff just default for now. Uh, let's just position these, make these evenly apart. Yeah, okay, I think those are good. So now we have our CPU usage, and it also shows the uh, program that's using the most CPU usage. We have our RAM usage and our uh, amount of space in our C drive. And if you want to get rid of the settings here, you can just right click on it, uh, manage skin, and then uh, it's under settings.ini here, and we can just unload that. So there we go, we have our system information now. The next skin we'll take a look at is called Honeycombs, and these are these hexagon uh, application icons. 
So let's go ahead and download it once again. Click on it to install. Install. And there we go. So let's go ahead and open up Rain Meter. And you'll see the, the Honeycomb folder. And you'll see a whole bunch of folders here for the different programs we can add to our desktop. So I'm on a VM right now and I don't have too many programs installed. So let's uh let's add a couple. So first we'll add VLC. Uh, and we have two options here. We have this icon here, or we can also choose this icon. I think I like the icon too here. So one thing to keep in mind with uh, some of these hexagons is it can't actually find our v VLC installation folder. So if you click on it, it's not going to open VLC. So if we click on edit here, uh, we need to show the path to our VLC executable file. So we're going to want to find where we have VLC installed or your program. So mine is on uh, the C drive and it's in program files and under VLC video LAN and then uh, VLC.exe. So what I like to do is just right click on it, go to properties and then copy the location and then just paste it in here. You're going to want to make sure that the VLC.exe is at the end here as well. Uh, so that's the path to our VLC and we're just going to want to save it and we can exit out of it. Now sometimes if you click on it, it won't actually work the first time. You sometimes need to restart your computer. Uh, so we'll do that in a second. Let's add a few more icons. So uh, let's also add uh, Chrome here. So just open the Chrome folder, Chrome.ini, and we're going to load that. And we can position these to uh, put it right beside our VLC icon. Uh, there's also a couple here for some websites. So for example, the last one down here was for YouTube and we can load it. So actually, if we open up the Chrome one, it should open up Chrome. And if we actually open up the YouTube one, it's going to open up uh, YouTube in our default browser. As VM's a little bit slow, but you guys get the idea. It opens up YouTube. Uh, let's add a few more. Oh yeah, one thing I also want to mention is, let's say your program isn't listed here, you can actually make custom hexagons. Uh, you can even change the icons and customize these to however you want. However, I'm not really going to go into that this video, it might take some time. So I might make a separate video on how to make uh, custom icons and add programs that aren't in the list here. So leave a like if you guys would like to see that video. Alright, so I just did a restart and let's go ahead and check to see if our VLC is working now. Yeah, there we go, so open VLC. And that's how you add the honeycomb application icons. So the final skin we'll install today is called VizBubble and it's known as a visualizer. And what a visualizer is, it basically will show all the audio that's coming out of your speakers visually on your desktop, just like this. So let's go ahead and download it. Open up the ARM skin file. Make sure that both of these are checked. Click on install. And then once you've done that, it should already be loaded on your desktop. Now you won't be able to see it because uh, there's no audio playing. So let's get some audio going here. And if I minimize this, you can see that it is uh, displaying the audio coming out of the speakers uh, in this circle here. So we can go ahead and click on it to drag it around and it actually fits perfectly around the sun on the desktop here. Uh, but we can actually adjust the radius uh, of it. So if we go to rain meter here and you'll see viz bubble, uh, you'll see a couple more INI files here. If we uh, drag this to the side here. Uh, so right now bar extrude.ini is loaded by default, but we also have the wave option here, uh, wave filled.ini, and wave stereo. So we have a couple styles here that you can play around with. Uh, I like bar extrude. And uh, if we open the settings window here and we load settings window.ini, you can see that we have a, a GUI here, uh, an interface that we can actually adjust the visualizer with. So you can adjust the radius here. I'm going to leave it at 172 because that was perfectly uh, the perfect radius to fit around the desktop here uh, but uh, you can pretty much uh, you know mess with these and uh, make the visualizer to your liking so you can um, change the color of it if you want change the audio device that it's listening on uh, sensitivity frequency you know you can basically customize this to however you like it but in this case I think the default settings are perfect and in this case I'm just gonna leave them like they are. Uh, one thing I'd actually recommend is to make sure that you uncheck draggable because I find all the time when I have this skin enabled that I'm always accidentally dragging it around. So make sure that draggable is unchecked. So 
So that brings us to the end of the tutorial. I hope it helped. If it did, leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you guys want me to make any more Rain Meteor videos, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd also recommend checking out the Rain Meteor subreddit if you guys want to get some pretty good and interesting ideas of how to uh, customize your desktop with Rain Meteor. But anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.